Okay, here we're going to talk about bonds. And before I go into bonds, I want to, I, the, the one thing, when I talk to students, they, they always talk about stock and they want to know about stock and so forth. However, I'm going to make the argument now and, and you know, throughout the course that bonds are much more interesting. In fact, if you were to go back to uh, work at Solomon Brothers uh, back in the 80s, uh, if, you, if you did poorly, you know, where they kind of sent you for your career to die was equities in Dallas, where you wanted to be bonds in, in New York, right? So bonds are very interesting. Bond markets are large, right? Uh, however, you know, bonds have, uh, are mainly dealt with by institutions, right? Uh, so students don't really see this. You see stock and rob and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and, and that's fine, but, but really, there's, there's an absolutely massive amount of money to be made in bonds, and bonds are where I worked, uh, so uh, I'm partial to, to bonds. Now, first and foremost, before we jump in here, the text and I am using the term bond very loosely. So, in general, what we're just saying here is this is some sort of fixed income security, or, or this is a, or, 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 you know, what the text means is a debt security, right? So this is a liability of the firm, this is debt. And, and we'll talk about, most of what we'll talk about here would be fixed income. Now, specifically, a bond would imply some sort of collateral, meaning I've pledged some collateral. If I don't pay you, you get my factory. Whereas most of the securities we're going to actually talk about are not bonds. They don't have any collateral. Uh, they would have no collateral. So when Apple uh, issues a bond, there's no collateral. So technically, it's a debenture, right? Um, also, if it's between one and 10 years, it's a note. Uh, so, there's, so in other words, instead of you know, being very specific about saying, okay, this is a subordinated debenture, we're just calling everything a bond, right? Even if it's a note or so forth, we're just calling it a bond. So first of all, keep in mind that about bond, right? So what, what is a bond? A bond is nothing other than a promise to pay according to some schedule or, or according to some uh, event. This is why bonds will be you know, really interesting because a lot of times people think derivatives are exciting, but there's a lot of derivatives embedded in bonds. But so the idea of a bond is it is just uh, a promise to pay according to some set schedule or some uh, s uh, event, right? So uh, another way to look at bonds is how they differ from equity. So, uh, and this will be very important later, bonds are not ownership. So you don't get uh, a vote, right? You don't get to vote for the board of directors or anything. So bonds are not ownership. Uh, interesting aspect of bonds is the uh, interest is tax deductible. So the idea here is uh, the more the company pays in interest, the more the taxes, the lower their taxes are. So that's a huge, a huge aspect of bonds. And you know, and the, the big thing here is bonds are have to be paid according to that schedule. If you don't pay according to that schedule, that's bankruptcy, right? And and the and if you, if you don't pay according to the schedule, then then the creditors, the, the bond, the owners of the bond can start to uh, uh, take assets of your firm, right? So the idea here is, you know, these are but. You know, I want you to think about this, you know, so those are important distinctions from equity, but remember, I want you to think about bonds just as a promise, right? Good. Uh, so when we talk about, so I'm going to go over just, just brief, uh, 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 briefly the promise, right? Uh, and then we'll, we'll look at specific aspects of bonds and how to get the price and so forth in future videos. But the, the, the promise that we're talking about here is, is um, laid out in what is termed the bonds indenture. I mean, E-N-T-U-R-E, -E, the bond's indenture. So first and foremost, this will tell the terms of the bond. And here's the thing. So in other words, it'll say the bond's payments are semi-annually, the coupon rate is 6%, and it's a 10-year bond, right? So these are, these are like, you know, terms of the bond. And we're gonna talk about this later, but the, that tells you uh, the bond payments. So if I say it's, uh, and it'll also tell you the face value. The face value in this course will always be a thousand, right? So uh, face par value will we'll treat as the same thing, and it's always a thousand. So so that lays out the schedule of promise. Like if I said uh, six percent semi-annually for ten years, that means the you know and I will go over this a little bit later, but it's going to pay uh, the bond. Each bond will pay thirty dollars every six months uh, for the next ten years. Right? So that gives us uh, uh, the the uh, that gives us um, the schedule of payments, right? There's a lot of other aspects of, of, that go into this promise, right? So uh, whether a bond has a sinking fund will be in the promise. A sinking fund is a, a certain amount of the bond is retired, outstanding bond, you know, is retired every year. This, is, this isn't terribly important. Uh, oh, security will go into this. So the, if whatever collateral, so if I don't pay this bond, um, 
Uh, you can take my, you know, tractor sort of thing. Uh, and, uh, and of course, lack of security will be listed in there. Um, the, the, where the bond sits in the capital structure. So an important thing to keep in mind is, again, looking at it as a capital stack is kind of, you know, what we have here is equity. We have equity at the bottom. And then this is all, you know, debt. These are all uh, promises. This is all, you know, what we're talking about here, bonds. But within this, this is now an important aspect here is equity. There's no ranking in equity, right? Uh, there, you know, no one gets paid before another person, right? You can't, you can't say, I'm going to pay these equity holders uh, when we're talking about common stock, common stock here. Uh, you can't pay these equity holders but not pay these, com you know, these common stock holders but not pay these others. Um, so the idea here is, but in, in, so there's no ordering of these common stockholders, but in debt, right, there are, right? So we could have senior and junior debt holders, and the senior get paid first and then the junior later. So um, where you sit, you know, senior, right, uh, I, O, R, senior, right? So where you sit precisely in the capital structure, um, you know, subordinated down, right, uh, is, is listed in the, in the bond indenture. But it's, it's important to know that bonds are ordered. These people get paid, then these people, then these people, and then, then finally everyone here gets paid, right? But there's an ordering, there is an ordering to debt. Uh, anything else uh, I want to say? Uh, what, you know, I, I'm kind of delaying until I get to one of the big ones is protective covenants. Let me talk about those now. So also in the indenture are things called protective covenants. So what I said earlier, this is where what I said earlier is important. So uh, bonds, you have no vote, right, you, for the board of directors. So bondholders have no representation, right? So, so you know, if, if I'm an equity holder and I want management to do something, I can uh, use, you know, uh, go through the board, right, to, and the board will tell management to do this. But you have no mechanism like that. You are not an owner of the firm uh, if you're a debt holder. So if you want management to do anything, you have to put it in the promise. You have to put it in the indenture, and that's what protective covenants are. So I often give an example of, you know, why won't a firm, if I could sell a bunch of debt, you know, and then I think the firm's doing poorly, so what I could do is I could take all the proceeds, I sell 100 million in debt, I can just um, uh, give out 100 million as a dividend and then, you know, uh, close the firm, right? So it, what would stop management from doing that if they, if they saw, you know, business prospects or that? And, and it's actually the protective covenants in the indenture. So the, in the indenture, there's a bunch of stuff where, where the bondholders were saying, management, you have to do this or you can't do this, right? So again, this comes from the fact that the bondholders don't have any you know, vote, so they have to put it in this promise. They, they have to put it in the contract, right? Again, I say this is a promise, is, you know, the indenture is it's a formal legal contract, right? And, and the nice thing is you can bring these up. Look on the SEC for bond indentures of a million and you can read them. But uh, in terms of protective covenants, uh, what they'll say is you can't increase the dividend you know, above a certain amount. So you can't increase the dividend by more than 5% per year or something like that. That would be a protective covenant. Uh, uh, another protective covenant is you have to, uh, uh, now this, so there's some things like you can't do and then there's some that you can do. So this is obviously a can. A can do protective covenant would be, or you have to do, uh, is uh, audited financial statements, right? So you have, to, um, you have to file audited financial statements on a timely schedule. Interestingly enough, usually in the bond adventure, if, if any of you want to become sort of what are often termed vulture capitalists, but it's, uh, you know, somewhat, uh, uh, yeah, um, which is not you know, a terrible, terrible thing to do, uh, what you can do, so if, if the, the firm violates the, that, that, that part, that protective covenant, you can ask for all of your money back, right? So in other words, let's say there are 100 million of bonds outstanding, they don't file audited financial statements in a timely manner, you can say, well, give me my 100 million back. You know, uh, so and usually what there is, there's a trustee who manages all the, who represents all the bondholders, so the trustee would say that, right? You as just an individual bondholder, if you have a small piece of it, couldn't say that, but, but the trustee would, would manage this. But um, now, so that would be sort of the, the, the enforcement, or what happens if you don't abide by that protective covenant is I can demand all my money back. And if, you, if you're a firm that can't uh, file audited uh, financial statements, you're probably not doing very well. So that may bankrupt the firm. The firm may say, well, I don't have the money, and then, then they're bankrupt, and you take the asset. So that's a uh, kind of a, uh, not, I don't want to say common, but that is a way some people have, have acquired firms, as I, 
I buy a bunch of their bonds, I wait for them to break the protective covenant, I ask for all the money back when they can't give it to me, then they go into bankruptcy and I own the assets. Of course, an important thing to keep in mind here is you don't have to enforce it. So I think Dell missed its financial statements quite a bit, but the bondholders never told them. They didn't want Dell to go bankrupt. So they said, okay, we'll do better. Okay, we'll do better. So that's another important thing to remember about these protective covenants is it's not that you have to do it. It's not you, you're late, it automatically triggers it. It's just if you're late, then the bondholders can decide what to do. And they can, you know, they, they, can, they can say, give me my money back, or they can say no, right? So uh, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't put uh, the bondholders in, in sort of a street jacket. Uh, other protective covenants, uh, you can't issue debt senior to me would be, would be another protective covenant. Uh, if I have, um, if, you know, my collateral is a, is a tractor, you can't issue any other debt with, with, uh, with, the, uh, with uh, that tractor's collateral. So limitations on what you can do with collateral. There could be, there could be uh, things of how, the, how the company should manage the firm, right? Uh, you can't. Uh, you have to maintain cash above this level. You have to maintain working capital above this level. Uh, you can write, again, this is, bonds are, it's just, this is a legal document. It's, you know, um, if you want me to buy your debt, you know, put that stipulation. You have to keep, you know, uh, working capital above this level, and, and that goes into there, and then, then that's a requirement uh, that the uh, management has to, to abide by, right? So, uh, but the idea here is the underlying, so on the exam, I don't really care if you remember, like memorize protective covenants, I want you to know the reason why they have to be in there, right? Because management works for shareholders, right? So, uh, and, and, and you as a bondholder have no vote, management doesn't necessarily work for you. So anything that you want, any way that you want to protect yourself has to be in that bond indenture, it has to be in that contract, and you know, right? Um, management works for shareholders. Shareholders want the firm to be risky, uh, and this is a you know one thing. I uh, really um, maybe I should mention this earlier, but uh, keep in mind when we're talking when we're comparing debt and equity holders, equity they have different risk preferences. So think if you're a debt holder in Google when it was a small firm, right? Do you really uh, if if Google does really well, right? You know, let's say the debt pays five percent, you still get five percent, right? Uh, no matter how well the firm does, you still get your 5%. Whereas if you're an equity holder, if the firm does really well, you get more money, right? So keep in mind, equity holders want more risk, right? Because if the firm succeeds, they get the additional uh, cash, they get the additional income. Debt holders do not want risk, right? So because if the firm does very well, they don't get an additional dime. But if the firm does poorly, and again, any risk goes up, you increase risk on the upside, you increase risk on the downside. So if, if the firm does very poorly, I don't get paid. So keep in mind the structure of the contract, the structure of debt, just the debt, we've kind of simple debt that we're talking about here, just you, you pay me 5%. Uh, this makes the, this, this means the, the debt holders prefer the firm to be safe, right? Whereas the people who management answers to, the shareholders, right? They want the firm to be risky. So, right. So, what the, the so the idea of the protective covenants is to, to sit there and say, okay, well, let's write a bunch of stuff in to make sure when I say like keep cash on, make sure the firm is safe, right? So this this is uh, you know this is the important part of the indenture. All right. So I think I'll leave it at that. Um, in, in future videos, I'll look at how to get the price of a bond, given the bond indenture. Um, and, and then the, the present interest rate on the bond. We'll talk a little bit about bond ratings and so forth. Have a great day.